In this video, we will go over how to automatically detect an a USB to serial converter. Specifically, we will be looking at FTDI USB serial converters. They are one of the most common manufacturers using these cables, but the same technique can be used in many other devices. So let's get started. First thing you want to you want to do is you want to download the FTProg utility from FTDI's website. This utility is used is used to modify the EEPROM contents of the cable so that we have something we can search off of. So you just go to ftdichip.com slash utilities, look for FTProg, and then download and install it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to scan and parse. Once you scan and parse for the devices, it will list all of the FTDI devices connected to your system. I highly recommend if you're using this tool that you only have one FTDI device connected at the same time, just so that you don't accidentally reprogram something. Now there's a few different fields we could change on here. I have used the product description in the past, and if you reprogram the product description, then you have to use the FTDI's D2XX library to find the device based on that. It works, but there is problems with it. Specifically, if, if the D2XX uh, library has the connection, then Visa can't have it. And if Visa has a connection, the FTDI device can't have it either. So if either one of those has a blown handle or a orphaned handle, then the, either Visa won't be able to connect to the device and open it, or the FTDI D2XX DLL will not be able to find the device. Now, a better way to do it is you can uncheck this auto-generate serial number and then program it with a specific serial number. This is what I have done, and in this particular case, I've put in the string ATE underscore DMM1. Now, the advantage of doing this is that this serial number will show up in the Windows registry and we can find it, so we can find what the device is. The disadvantage of this technique is, is that you're only able to have one USB device with a given serial number and vid-pid combination connected to the system at a time. So if you have multiple devices, they each need their own serial number to, uh, to, for this to work. But one of the fringe benefits of this technique is that if you program all of your fixture cables with the same serial number, they will always come up with the same COM port in Windows. So that's another trick if you want to simplify things. Okay, so once we've changed the serial number, what you do is you go to device program. I've already programmed it, but you would just press program. And then afterwards, you would want to cycle the port or preferably unplug the cable and plug it back in. It's a little bit cleaner if you do it that way. Okay, once you've got your cable programmed, you can look in the Windows registry and find it. If you're not familiar with how to get to the Windows registry, go to the start menu and type in regedit. Reg edit and it will come up. You should not change these values unless you know what you're doing. Otherwise it will uh, affect how your Windows system works and or corrupt it. So the keys we're interested in is under local machines, system current control set, enum, FTDI bus. And in here, each of these sub keys is a, dev a FT dev FTDI device that has been enumerated on the test system. In this case, you can see when my cable first came up and enumerated, with this vid and PID and this default serial number, after I reprogrammed it and unplugged and plugged it back in, it came up with the serial number ATE underscore DMM1, and then they delimited it with an A at the end for some reason. Under the sub keys, you have a 0000 folder, and then under device parameters, this is the port name of the cable that we're looking for. Now, one of the disadvantages of this key is that this will tell you what the port name is, but it will not tell you if the device is connected or not. For that, we're going to have to query Visa for that. And I've written a VI to do this, and I'll, we'll walk through that real quick. So basically what we're doing here is we open the registry, and this is a gotcha, is that you want to open the registry in read-only mode, so key underscore read. And the reason is, is that if you open it in the default read-write, mode then the you have to run the vi under admin privileges and in most cases you do not want to run your test systems using admin pr privileges so we open the key we get the sub keys and then for each sub key we parse out what the serial number is and what the port and then read the port name value this will give us a couple of arrays one here's the human readable com port names this is the serial numbers that we found and then this is that we're grabbing the, we're regexing 
Well, in this case, I think we did scan from screen string, but we're scanning the port number off and storing it as an array so we can use it better with Visa. For my uh, Visa search, what we're doing is, is we're looking for all of the serial devices by their instrument ID. This is what Visa under the hood calls COM ports, if you weren't familiar, is that they're listed as ASRLs instead of COM. COM is actually a alias in Visa, and we don't want to go up by alias in case you've used your alias somewhere else. And so we're grabbing all of the instruments. We are taking the COM port number, generating an ASRL string for it, and doing a compare. If we find the instrument, then we know that the instrument is there and that it matches what our FTDI serial number string is. If the device is not in our visa writ list, then we're going to throw an error saying the device has not been found. For the search string array VI, it's pretty simple. It's just taking the 1D array of strings. You're searching for it using a regex. You could regex the string if you wanted to and if you have other applications. If the regex comes back with an offset pass index of greater than or equal to zero, then we know we found it and we pass out the index. Otherwise, pass out a false and an index of negative one. Okay. And that's pretty much it. If you get the use case where the FTDI serial number is just not in the registry, then we'll also throw an error saying that the device has never been connected to the system. This is useful if you've fat fingered something in the programming space or when you're setting up the VI that you can, you then get a clear error that there's something wrong with your ID string. And that's how you automatically detect an FTDI USB to serial cable. If you're if you're not using these a lot in the fill, the reason why this is a very useful piece of code is every time you reconnect a USB to serial cable, Windows will enumerate it on a different COM port. And so it, if you use this piece of code, it doesn't matter which COM port Windows enumerated it to, you will get the correct COM port for that cable.